It seems like after weeks and weeks, we're finally at the conclusion, the last words of the book of Revelation. And we see that it is primarily proclamation. It's not prediction. It's telling us what will happen, not when it will happen. At the turn of the eight. 1800s, the 19th century, the binary star system, Eta Carene, was faint and undistinguished. In the first decades of that century, it became brighter and brighter until by April of 1843, it was the second brightest star in the sky. It outshone, was only outshone by Cirrus, which is almost a thousand times closer to Earth. In the years that followed, it gradually dimmed again. And by the 20th century, was totally invisible to the naked eye. The star that in the 1800s was bright became totally invisible to the naked eye. The star has continued to vary in its brightness ever since. And while it is once again visible to the naked eye on a dark night, it has never again come close to its peak of 1843. This leads me to a quote by Niels Bohr, the physicist, who says that prediction is a very difficult art. He says, especially when it involves the future. Scientists at the Goddard Space Flight Center report that one of the largest stars in our galaxy is about to self-destruct, Eta Carinae, which has a mass a hundred times greater than our own sun, is giving signs that its life is about over. Researchers say that it could become a supernova, a blazing, exploding star within the next 10,000 years. What was especially interesting about science, this report, 81, was that the statement that since light from the star takes 9,000 years to reach the Earth. If you turn on a light at Eta Carinae, it takes 9,000 years for light to travel the speed of light to reach the Earth. The actual explosion could have already taken place You know, this is how vast the universe is. The striking fact reminds us of th that the nature of biblical prophecy, for example, predictions found in Revelation are often written in the past tense. This is done because even though the prophet is writing of a future event, he has already seen it. Also in the mind of God, it is as if the two events have already happened. God is not limited by time. And even though Christians differ on the interpretation of today's scripture, we can definitely say that God's judgment against sin is certain. That is proclamation. 
the outpouring of his anger against those who continually resist him is so sure that it has been written about in the past tense. This should cause us to reflect with the Apostle Peter, who wrote so appropriately, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy living and godliness? As Christians, we know that what's ahead for this world, and that knowledge should be kept, should keep us living close to God. We don't know what's up ahead. But we are confident that God has it in his control. Not all humans are as realistic and optimistic as Bohr. Some are much more cynical about the future of humanity. And we see this in H.G. Wells. Toward the end of his life, the British novelist grew despairing about the fate of the human race. One evening at dinner, Wells laid out his picture of the future. Mankind has failed because evolution has failed to produce in us the right kind of brain. Therefore, Wells exclaimed, we will destroy ourselves, die out as a species, and revert to the mud and slime from which we arose. And we shall deserve our fate, he said, adding that the human race had only 1,000 years more to survive. That's a very iffy prediction. Prediction is difficult, especially for humans. Oftentimes in our life, we've heard of doubters who thought that humanity would die off in a nuclear winter. But who holds the future? God alone knows the future and the day when Christ will return. Corey Ten Boom wrote, Never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. This passage, this book, is full of proclamations. It's teaching of what will happen, not when it will happen. It's telling us what God has already decided to do, but he hasn't given us the timeline. Revelation is, above all, a book of hope. It shows that no matter what happens on this earth, God is in control, and it is he who promises that evil will not last forever. It will be destroyed. And there is a wonderful reward for those who believe and trust in Christ Jesus as Savior and Lord. See, God has predicted the future in the past. In the book of Daniel, he was precise as to the day and year of the Messiah's coming into Jerusalem. But in the book of Revelation, we don't see this. God alone knows the future and the day when Christ will return. There is the song says, many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow and I know who holds my hand. See, this book proclaims how to live in light of Christ's imminent return. During the 1960 presidential campaign, JFK often closed his speeches with the story 
of Colonel Davenport, the Speaker of the, of the uh, Connecticut House of Representatives. One day in 1789, the sky of Hartford darkened ominously. And some of the representatives glancing out the windows feared the end was at hand. Quelling a clamor for immediate adjournment, Davenport rose and said, the day of judgment is either approaching or it is not. If it is not, there is no cause for adjournment. If it is, I choose to be found doing my duty. Therefore, I wish that candles be brought rather than fearing what is to come. We are to be faithful until Christ returns instead of fearing the dark. We're to be lights as we watch and we wait. This is the conclusion of Revelation chapter 22, verses 6 through 21. It's authentic prophecy from God. Christ's return is imminent. And those who obey the prophecy will be eternally blessed. 22 verse 6. The angel said to me, These words are trustworthy and true. The Lord, the God who inspires the prophets, sent his angels to show his servants the things that must soon take place. Look, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy written in the scroll. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I heard and had seen them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who had been showing them to me. But he said to me, don't do that. I am a fellow servant with you and with your prophets and with all who keep the words of the scroll. Worship God. Then he told me, do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this scroll because the time is near. Let the one who does wrong continue to do wrong. Let the person continue to be vile. Let the one who does right continue to do right. And let the holy person continue to be holy. Look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give each person according to what they have done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city. Outside are dogs, those who practice magic arts, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idolaters, and everyone who who loves and practices falsehood. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give to you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come, and let the one who hears say, come. Let the one who is thirsty Come, and let the one who wishes take the free gift of the water of life. I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this scroll, if anyone adds anything to them, God will add to that person the plagues described in this scroll. And if anyone takes words away from this scroll, of prophecy, God will take away from that person any share in the tree of life 
and in the holy city, which are described in the scroll. And he who testifies to these things says, yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people. Here we see various speakers in this passage, John, an angel, Jesus, the spirit, the bride, the hearers. And this is a parallel to the prologue in chapter 1 of Revelation, verses 1 through 8. There are three central themes that we see in this passage of Scripture. The book is authentic, prophecy from God. This is legit. And Jesus' return is imminent. And those who obey the prophecy will be blessed. Look, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the word of the prophecy written in the scroll. It's not to be sealed. This book isn't predicting when Christ will return. It's telling us how to live in light of the imminent, certain return of Christ. Do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this scroll because the time is near. Let the one who does wrong continue to do wrong. Let the vile person continue to be vile. Let the one who does right continue to do right. And let the holy person continue to be holy. See, Daniel was told to seal up the words. But John is told not to seal it. That it must be unveiled. It must be revealed to everyone so that it may be obeyed because the time is near. Blessed are those who wash their robes and outside are dogs. See, those who wash their clothes in the blood of the Lamb, who come to Christ for forgiveness and hope and transformation, these are the ones who are faithful. It's those who do not. These are the dogs, those who are outside, those who have refused to change. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony to the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David. This is what Jesus is called in the, the Gospels. He's a descendant of David, and he's the bright and morning star. He is the ideal ruler, the protector of his people. He is the fulfillment of the messianic hope, as it mentions that in Numbers 24, 17. A star will come out of Jacob, a scepter will rise out of Israel. This morning star is a promise that the long night of tribulation is all but over. A new day will dawn. And this new dawn is eternity. The spirit and the bride say, come. And let the one who hears say, come. And let the one who is thirsty come. And let the one who wishes take fr the free gift of the water of life. It is salvation. It is new life. I warn everyone who hears the words of this prophet is goal. If anyone adds anything to it, <coughs> or if anyone takes anything away from it, and this takes us back to the, what is said in Deuteronomy 4.2. 
Do not add to what I command you, and do not subtract from it, but keep the commands of the Lord your God that I give you. Deuteronomy 12, 32. He who testifies of these things says, Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people. Amen. See, he is coming, and we pray and hope. The Aramaic equivalent of come, Lord Jesus, is Maranatha. And we see this in 1 Corinthians 10.6. This passage emphasizes that God's promises are trustworthy and true, and he will fulfill them. He doesn't tell us when he's going to fulfill them. But we have this hope. And these people who were outside of this holy city, there is a way in. The former prostitutes, liars, idlers, and others can be washed. They can wash their robes in the blood of the Lamb and be clean. Blessed are those who wash their robes that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city. The Christian work is obedience in the book of Revelation. We're to be faithful to Christ. <coughs> We are not to turn our backs on him. We're not to add anything or subtract anything. I am coming quickly. And he says this three times. Preaching revelation has an effect. Its truths will either melt the hearts of the repentant or harden the hearts of those who refuse to change. They will either instruct about salvation or they will lead someone away from hope and redemption. Jesus could return at any moment and our lives are not to be idle. We are to be ready Proclamation is the message of the book of Revelation. It's not prediction. It's not a timetable. It's not insights as to when he's coming. It's not a biblical astrology. It's not a Christian speculation about the future. It's a proclamation of truth about the future. Nothing in this book is presented as a systematic eschatology about the end times. It, the proclamation is that the living Christ, who is in heaven, who rose from the dead, will return and bring the end of the old order and the restoration of a new order, a new Eden, heaven. The living Christ is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The divine Christ has accomplished his mission by redeeming the world. In the Old Testament, it's clear in Isaiah 44, 6, of who Alpha and Omega was. It was God. But in the book of Revelation, it's not only God, but the Lamb. The Lamb is the Alpha and the Omega. All of the titles of God are applied to Christ's divinity. He is not a created being. He is not a mere great prophet. He is not a great moral teacher. He is not a misguided martyr. He is the God 
the Son, the second person of the Trinity. As John said in his gospel, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. The Word and God existed from eternity. Nothing was created except the two of them getting together to make it happen. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Jesus said, I and the Father are one. <coughs> in 1 John, it says, The life appeared. We have seen it <coughs> and testify to it. And we proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard so that you may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Christ is the light of the world. Come unto me, he said, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And the one who comes to me, I will certainly not cast out. See, the promise of Abraham has been fulfilled. That is what we're looking at. God alone knows the future and the day when Christ returns. Re Revelation proclaims the truth. It never predicts when he is coming. God intentionally does not tell us what will happen in the future. Nothing in the book of Revelation tells us when something is going to happen. May things about tomorrow, many things about tomorrow, I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. He wants us to trust him daily. God blesses those who read the words of this prophecy to the church, and he blesses all who listen to its message and obeys what it says, for the time is near. This authentic prophecy from God is an open book and should be accessible to Christians today. Revelation tells us to keep persevering in obedience. We must never forget that Jesus is coming back. I just live from day to day. I don't borrow from its sunshine, for its skies may turn to gray. I don't worry over the future, for I know what Jesus said, and today I'll walk beside him, for he knows what is ahead. Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow. Every step is getting brighter as the golden stairs I climb, every burden getting lighter, every cloud is silver lined. There the sun is always shining, there no tear nor dim, a, dim the eye. At the ending of the rainbow, where the mountains touch the sky. I don't know about tomorrow. It may bring me poverty, but the one who feeds the sparrow is the one who stands by me. And the path that may be portion may be through the flame or flood, but his presence goes before me, and I'm covered with his blood. Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. We don't know when Christ is returning, but we need to be alert 
and ready. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, come Lord Jesus. We look forward to the day when you will make all things right. When things that have occurred and the injustices of life are made right. That those who have died for serving and following you will be honored and rewarded. We pray, Lord, that your eternal kingdom and that your eternal divine city, Jerusalem, this new Jerusalem, this huge city reflecting your glory will one day be reality and that we will be in it because we have washed our robes in the blood of the Lamb. And we thank and praise you for your grace. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.